The stock market was finally able to surpass the level from 18 months ago. It was certainly struggling to surpass this point without additional central bank stimulus. Now that the Fed seems like they will be going for rate cuts in 2019, stocks have been rising in hopes that conditions will become even easier. With trillions of dollars of government bonds trading with negative returns, the appetite for risk increases. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to talk about the two tails. One is the stock market and one is the economy. Very different, especially today. So let's begin with the stock market itself. Here you can see how fantastic stocks are doing at this moment. You can see that they had risen at the beginning of the day. Then they started to fall over some concerns geopolitically and others. And it has risen ever since. The tensions are always easing out there simply because the Federal Reserve is going to be there to backstop any losses. At least that's what we're being told. So this is the market achieving a new record high. The 10-year Treasury yield drop as low as 1.97%, the first time below 2% since November 2016. Fed opens the door to rate cut amid growing uncertainties. So at least the Federal Reserve was able to admit that there are some uncertain factors that are present today and in the future, if they are not corrected, if they are not dealt with, they are going to weigh down on the economy. They're not willing to admit the real things that are going on, but of course, at least they have started to bring up some of these issues, saying they're under control, but it's down into the future. The Fed funds rate wasn't the only thing that is seeing some downward pressure, or at least it will in the near future. The LIBOR rate has also come down quite significantly. We are looking at this from the mid-2000s up until present. I just wanted to show you in the previous cycles how this has moved. You could see here for yourself, as soon as they started to bring down the LIBOR rate, that was right around the recession time frame, looking at about 2008, end of 2007. So we we are seeing that today of course nobody knows where it will go it can turn the other way around and rise higher but this just shows you where it is at this moment it was a big change in fact you can see that it is the largest daily change this chart goes back to 2014 so at least in the last five years we have not seen the LIBOR move this much and it moved down quite a bit this is one important indicator to always keep an eye out for I like to bring it to you as often as I can whenever there are any significant changes this tells us what is occurring because there are over 200 trillion dollars worth worth of financial instruments using the LIBOR to trade and we are seeing it falling faster and faster. Take a look at global government bonds. We are seeing today that there is a large portion of them trading at a negative yield. You're seeing Switzerland, Denmark, Sweden, Germany, Netherlands, and so on. No matter where you go, you're getting negatives all throughout. That shows you how distorted these markets are. The central banks have reduced interest rates to a point at which they cannot recover from. There are trillions of dollars worth of negative yielding bonds. I'll show you a chart that corresponds to that in just a second, but it is impossible to then fix a future crisis by using the same quote unquote tools that you did last time because they had a problem and let's say maybe interest rates were at 2% or 5%, depending on which country you're looking at, and they would bring them down. They could bring them down to 4% or maybe 2 or 1, bring them down to 0 even. But this time around, they had to bring them into the negative, and now it looks like we're heading into the next crisis. So what are you going to do? You're going to bring them further into the negative? It is a proven fact that negative interest rates really has a floor as to how far you can go, and the benefits of that are not really felt. There hasn't been any study or any actual documented evidence to show you that negative interest rates have produced anything at all. This has created a messed up financial system that will have to suffer the consequences. 
Negative yielding debt hits a new record. So stocks aren't the only thing hitting record highs. Right now, we can see the negative yielding debt index has hit $12.5 trillion. This is extremely high. No matter how you look at it, it has broken all previous records, looks to continue. It is going up very sharply. And of course, at this time, there is no possible solution that they can provide to change this. They're going into this territory negative yielding debt if the investors aren't buying it then the central banks will probably have to buy it that tells you that this has gone far beyond reason imagine taking all the risk of investing in a particular product maybe it's 10 year maybe it's 15 maybe it's 30 year and you don't even get a positive return you're guaranteed not to get a positive return so regardless of all of that risk that you take where maybe the government defaults on its debt maybe it's a partial default fault but if you even factor that out it would seem as though you're gonna get a negative return regardless very interesting times to say the least Global government bond yields excluding the U.S. at all-time lows. This tells you where it is headed. It hasn't been doing this just over the last few months. Take a look further back. Since the financial crisis, even before it, this has been going down further and further. The value of money is definitely declining right now. As you can see here, the risk tolerance is higher and higher. These governments around the world are not able able to provide investors with any form of high yield and so this is what happens they are given negative yield in so many cases investors have been buying them but i believe that central banks have been one of the biggest buyers Essentially what's happening right now is that central banks in the US, Europe, and Asia will all have to ease monetary policy to prevent another downturn. The Fed is talking about reducing interest rates. The ECB, of course, is already into the negative and they're talking about printing more money. There's no telling where this is going to stop for any of these central banks out there because they all want easy money. Even the ones that have increased are simply doing so at this time. But as soon as things turn down, they're going to have to reverse course and bring them to record lows no matter where they are. They're probably already near record lows, but of course they need to bring it even further. I'm going to show you three real factors about the economy. So we talked about the financial side, talked about the markets, but I want to show you the economic indicators. An index of U.S. freight traffic is deteriorating towards recession levels. Check this out. Tuesday's CAST report raised the recession flag, noting the shipments index as going from, quote, warning of a potential slowdown to, quote, signaling an economic contraction. Economic contraction is a polite way to say recession without actually saying it. This is in conjunction with other reports I've shown you of the big trucks not being sold as much as they would like. They have in fact reduced their orders significantly. I've documented that here in previous videos. Import compression is recessionary. Cast freight shipments index, that's the blue line, but essentially they're all moving down here from 2018 into 2019. The others here are the U.S. real goods imports as well as the inbound containers is giving you an idea on multiple levels. It shows weakness. It isn't what we're being told. And of course, if we simply just look one layer deeper than what the mainstream is going to show you, you start to find out a lot of interesting info. U.S. steel idling plants despite tariffs designed to save them. Pain has returned to the U.S. steel industry despite the tariffs put on imported steel last year that were designed to help. So U.S. Steel has officially announced this, so this information is coming direct from the source. One of the places is Gary, Indiana, which if memory serves correctly, this is one of the biggest population losses in the country. And not to mention also, they're talking about this particular place, Ecorse, Michigan, which is near Detroit, another area that has seen significant outflows of people over the years. 
They are suggesting, of course, that they're going to increase production as soon as conditions improve. Not sure when that's going to happen, but here they are. Why is this the case? Could it be the particular company? I'm not too sure, but it just gives you an idea of the slowdown that is happening today, affecting so many different markets. It's affecting so many different companies and industries and so on. So I wanted to bring that to you to give you a whole picture. Look, I can tell you about Tesla stock. I can talk about Uber and the Slack IPO how fantastic it is we can look at beyond meat and all of this information and it's so interesting but all of that stuff is out there already it's just front page news what we have to do is look just one level deeper even one level i find that most people don't like to get into the deeper levels i i personally do but that's what i have found over the years doing approximately 2500 videos here on the channel anyway if you just go one level deeper on your own you're going to find out a lot of info that's what i try to bring to you i try to show you all the resources and give you an idea of what's really happening. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, then please give me a thumbs up. Hit one button, just hit a like button and you are supporting me. Thank you very much. If you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have everything you need, all the details. We're talking about economic factors. We're talking about the technical analysis. We're looking at all of the different information you need to understand this without any jargon, without any difficult language. Check it out, link in the description if you want the audiobook. That's available at themoneygps.com. If you want some more real information, the real stuff, the good stuff, then you should watch this video definitely. So click on it and I will see you there.